today we're gonna add a truly one-of-a-kind piece of gear to my 2021 Toyota Tacoma. But before we install it, we've gotta trim away 18 inches of this frame. As you can see, I'm not in the shop. I'm in a place called Bowen Customs. I'm here in Colorado. They're letting me use their shop to cut a bunch of frame off the back of this Tacoma. And the reason that I'm here is because we're gonna develop a one-of-a-kind flatbed for this truck. Step one to our custom flatbed is hacking off a whole bunch of frame and increasing a whole bunch of departure angle. Now, the flatbed's gonna go out quite a ways past this, so I know this looks ridiculous, but there's just no reason to have all that down there. So the flatbed, I think, is gonna start at a 45, somewhere around here, but our departure angle is gonna be so much better than it was, which was already a departure angle that was way better than stock. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna build a uh, basically a custom hitch slash rear cross member out of this four x four tube. And I, this just has to be so solid. It has to be a solid recovery point. I'm gonna cut this in a way that I can integrate some of this factory cross member into it. But because this is like riveted and bolted on, this cross member has a lot of movement, but when we weld this to this frame, it's gonna really help with the rigidity on the back of this truck. Four x four tube might seem a little oversized for a rear cross member, but I think that it's just right because we're gonna use this for a recovery point. We're gonna use this as a place that we can mount a hitch receiver and it has to be super, super strong. There can't be any give in this thing because failure in an area like the frame is not an option. You can see what I got going on here. Real simple, square tube integrated into our C channel, integrated into the existing cross member and try to beef this bad boy up. So now, got a little bit of cleanup to do, and then I can start to burn things together. When I weld together a piece like this, I like to start with the stuff that is gonna be more difficult to do once it's on the vehicle. So we're gonna marry the hitch receiver to the four x four piece of tube, and then I'm gonna marry the four x four piece of tube to the factory cross member, and then we're gonna work our way from the inside out. Woo! Nice and hot. This cross member is pretty much done. I'm really pumped about it. This is, so beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? I think it looks rad. Some might not think it looks so rad because it's like integrated into this factory cross member. But one thing I think we can all agree on is that this is not a weak point of the vehicle. This is a very stout rear cross member that we just built. And there's some hidden benefits aside from just being a really good recovery point and something that we can hook to an off-road trailer. This is going to help to shore up the chassis and make it much more rigid. These chassis have way too much chassis flex. It's insane. It's C-channel and it's bolted and riveted together with these cross members. So when we take a four by four chunk of steel and we weld it to the back of it, that square tube, it's gonna take a lot of force to make that square tube flex. And I think that what this is gonna do for us is this is gonna really help reduce the amount of flex in the chassis overall. Some people will weld different sections of the frame uh, and box it in, but in my opinion, it's kind of a bad idea because if you don't box in the entire thing, you're gonna have like weak points now. So right now, basically from here to the front bumper is all still made to flex, 
but we've shored up the front quite a bit with the, uh, the cradle for the winch. And then this rear cross member is gonna shore up the rear as well. So I need to get some paint on this. We've got the bed showing up any minute. We gotta assemble it. Brent has really good fabricators that work for him, but I wanted to help any way that I could. So I would take care of some of the small stuff here and there, like assemble the factory tailgate hardware into the custom made tailgate that they built for this bed. And while I was messing around with that, Brent and his team were putting all the finishing details on this bed. So this project that him and I had been working on for so many months could finally become a reality. Check that out. Now that we have this bed mounted, I wanted to go through, we're gonna do a full walk around and we're gonna talk about the hows and whys of the design. The first thing I wanna address is why didn't Nate build this himself? And I think for me it's obvious, maybe for you it's not. I could not produce a bed of this quality in my little shop up in Tacoma, Washington. This is something that you can only get from a professional shop. I mean, it's absolutely, Stunning and the fit and finish is it just couldn't be any better and uh, as much as I would love to think that I could build something like this and who knows maybe one day I can uh, I don't, don't quite have the tooling or the experience to pull something like this off The next question that I know I'm gonna get is Why did you put a big bed like this on a rock crawler? And this is why right here Brent has designed well Brent with well, I guess a little help from me Brent has designed it. I have been nudging but Brent has designed a bed that is ultra high clearance. Look at that departure angle. It's insane. We chopped off 18 inches of frame and the departure angle, I mean, you just can't get this any other way. And then with the dove, it's, there's nothing else in the industry even close to this where you've got a dovetail that also still has like utility function where all the parts of a bed that normally is for just looks, it doesn't do anything, is now a place where you can store, well, let's see what I put in here. You can store tools and stuff. I still don't remember where I put everything because we just got this thing together. What stuck out to me the most about the design of Brent's beds from Bowen Customs is the fact that he takes so much advantage of the extra space that you have in a bed. So, I mean, basically everything inside of this outline you can access and you can take advantage of. Whenever you look in here, it's gonna be hard to see because there's no lights in there yet. I'm gonna install lights in here eventually but there's like extra space everywhere for storage. I even have a 38 inch tall spare in there. So it's nuts. We, he actually, he engineered it wide enough that I could still get my Dometic fridge in the back, which is very important to me. Um, and it, I just can't say enough positive things. As you can tell probably, I'm very tired. We've been working nonstop to get this thing together because I'm taking it to Moab tomorrow to go have some fun. The rooftop tent is the iCamper Mini, Sky Camp Mini, isn't that what it's called? Do you remember? Sky Camp Mini, and the reason that I went with this tent, the reason I went with the tent at all, is I wanna be able to go to the Rubicon, camp comfortably, drive all the way home, and have something that not only can rock crawl really well, but that can camp really well. And I've been invited to some really big off-road events this year that I, I have to take advantage of, and this is gonna be the perfect tool for that job. The way that Brent designed this, oh, actually, I didn't show you one of the coolest parts. All right, so if I undo two little latches, this lifts up. I almost forgot to show you one of the coolest parts. Isn't that rad? Now it's easier to get the spare in and out if I need it. Um, with my fridge here, I can open up the fridge and get things to drink. And there's just, <laughs> there's so many little details of this truck that make it uh, super one of a kind. It's all aluminum. We didn't weigh it though. <laughs> we forgot to weigh it. So we'll pull a weight from the CAD drawings. We'll pull a weight from the CAD drawings. Um, when Brent tells me the weight from the CAD drawings, I will try to put that in the description of this video for those of you that are curious. One final thing that I want to talk about that sets these beds apart, and another reason that I wanted to work with Brent specifically, is that if I damage that box right there, he can send me a new box. If I damage the housing for that tail light, he can send me a new housing for the tail light. You don't have to cut off sections of like 
dented up and bruised up material and then repair it. It's something that is modular enough that I can pull the section off and I can put a brand new piece on to replace it, which for a guy like me who likes to bite off more than he can chew when it goes off road, that is gonna be a very, very nice feature to take advantage of. Thank you so much. This was awesome this week. I've been hanging out with him and his family. My family's been here. We've really got to know each other and uh, I'm gonna be taking this tomorrow morning to go camping bright and early and uh, go have some fun with some Patreon subscribers and then Brent is gonna come visit me at Easter Jeep Safari next week. So if you see either one of us next week, say what's up and if you're interested in a bed like this, make sure you check out Bowen Customs. And this is, this is like a very rock crawler centric bed, but he also makes tons of other options that are like, it'll take it, it doesn't bob the bed or anything like that. It takes full advantage if you're somebody who wants to carry more overland style gear, he does stuff like that too. So make sure you check out Brent and we'll see you next time.